are back in the house of the Lord on today. And Pastor and I, uh, Pastor Hamer and I, are so delighted that you decide to join us for Sunday Bible class. Sunday Bible class. So we're not going to do a lot of preliminaries because we want to have time to get into this word and see what God has to say to us today. Amen. How many of you know God is always talking to us? Glory to God. All we have to do is have our ears open to uh, hear what he is saying to us. So what I'm going to do as you do it also, amen. I'm going to go ahead and share. And what I want you to do is share also. Hallelujah. Let me turn this down. I want you to get on there and share also with your friends and whoever else needs to hear the word of God. Get on there and hit that share button. Amen. And also as you're hitting that uh, share button. Go ahead and get your Bibles, your notepads, whatever it is that you need to access the word of God. Because as a uh, pastor says, it's a good thing to lay your own eyes on the word so that you'll know that it's true for your own self. Not just because of what I said, but because you saw it for yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's what we want to do. We want to see it for ourselves, hallelujah so i got a couple more shares that i want to hit on here amen hallelujah the lord is good i'm excited about today and i'm excited about the word and i'm excited because this is the day that the lord has made and i will rejoice no matter what i feel i will rejoice and be glad in it amen hallelujah we can choose to rejoice do you believe that we can choose to rejoice you don't have to feel it all the time because we don't walk by our feelings amen we have to choose some days to rejoice because there's some days that i ain't feeling it amen hallelujah but i choose to rejoice we don't let our feelings uh, dictate to us what we do. So we're in the book called Grace, the Power of the Gospel. Grace, the Power of the Gospel. And we're on lesson number 14 for uh, our members that are watching. And uh, if you're um, not a member and you don't have the information, just follow along. Take notes. Don't forget get your bible so that you can see the scriptures because if you're listening today or any other day this is a word that god wants to get to you he does not waste his word how many of you know that god does not waste his word amen so we're on lesson 14 in and after the spirit and so i'm going to go down let's see we uh let's look under number five just for a for a little just a little review and i want to go under a if you're uh thinking well let's do the scripture romans 8 and 5 and it's in your lesson for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit and let's real quickly so that we could be reminded what the flesh is and what the spirit is because you may say well what do you mean after the flesh and after the spirit let's look at galatians 5. aren't you glad that god's word just tells you exactly what you need to know <laughs> amen amen i uh, i remember uh uh my former pastor he used to tell us uh, when we were uh, studying the scriptures or looking for revelation of the scriptures, he said, don't look up, look down. In other words, look in the word of God and you will find the answer. Amen. Galatians 5. And let's look at do do do. Let's look at 19. You know what? Um, let's see. Did we do 16 already? No. OK, let's I'm going to start at 16. And it's in my Bible say conflict between the spirit and the flesh. Oh, yeah. Sometimes it could be a conflict. Amen. But thank God we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We don't have to give in to the flesh. 
Woo, hallelujah. And it's freeing when you don't give in to it. Because that, that pressure is just for a moment. It don't last. It's just for a moment. Temptation generally is just for a moment. The enemy tries to put pressure on you. Go ahead and do it. Go ahead and say it. Just for a moment. But if you resist, then it lifts up off of you. Amen? Hallelujah. Don't give in for the moment, man. It ain't. Hey, you don't want a moment in your lifetime to destroy your whole week, <laughs> month, or year. Sometimes there are decisions that are made in a moment that affects us the rest of our lives. Amen. Sure, we can get forgiveness, but sometimes there are things that we can't go back and undo. You know what I'm saying? Just say, for instance, if you get into fornication and you get pregnant. Oh, you got something for 18, well, you say 18 years, but to you, <laughs> the rest of your life, amen. And that's what I mean. You get forgiveness, and I guess the child is a blessing. But I tell you, it's going to affect you the rest of your life. There are some decisions that we make. So that's why you don't want to surrender to the flesh, amen, in, a, in one heated moment. Whatever situation it is, it don't necessarily have to be fornication because sometimes we categorize stuff. Yeah, some may have more effects, but it's all sin. Amen. Amen. Let's get back here. Galatians 5, 16, it says, this I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if you be led by, of the Spirit, you are not under the law. Look at the works of the flesh. You want to know what the works of the flesh are? Look at this. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, or these, okay, or produced, which are these. Adultery, y'all know what that is. Fornication. You know what that is. Sex outside, well, sex when you're not married. Adultery is when you're married. Any kind of sex. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Don't say that, Pat. Any kind of sex, y'all. Amen. Uncleanness. Lasciviousness. Wild living. And that uncleanness don't necessarily mean cleaning your house. Because you know how they used to say cleanliness is next to godliness. <laughs> Amen. It was good to have a clean house, though, y'all. Uh, uh, lasciviousness, that's all kind of partying and wild living. Idolatry, anytime you put something ahead of God, it becomes an idol. We don't, we don't go out and worship Buddha and all the other, other gods, but sometimes we put things ahead of God. In our lives, amen. Sometimes we put our own selves ahead of God. When you don't do what God tells you to do, you're putting your own self first. Amen. Hallelujah. So it says uh, idolatry, witchcraft. And you all got to make sure that, uh, I said you all, we all. <laughs> got to make sure that we don't get into witchcraft. You say, oh, I don't do that. I don't cast spells. I don't do voodoo or anything like that. That's right. Okay. Yep. That's good. Angie says stuff you read. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Crystals. Yes. 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 And, um, mm hmm. And that, and that depends, you know, on the items, yes. Uh, and um, the other thing involved in manipulation. And sometimes we don't look at that as, amen. Sometimes we don't look at that as, you know, when you're trying to control somebody. God, do you know God doesn't control us? He gives us a choice. And when you try to control somebody then you're, you're delving into that area. You know what? He don't even tell us to control our kids when they're little. He said, teach them. 
raise them up in the admonition of the Lord. You guide them, okay? But as far as trying to control them, we don't want to get into those uh, issues because, like I said, sometimes being believers, we slide over this stuff. Amen. Well, I don't do that. I don't do that. I'm, I'm not worshiping another God. I'm not pulling out dolls and sticking pins in them and all that stuff, all the other stuff that people do. But you, you got to, when you get a check in your spirit, you need to pay attention to it. Amen. Uh, hatred. That's one that we really have to watch also. Because I told you all, I looked up the word hatred, and it means to love less. I was like, and when I read that, I was like, ooh. <laughs> it means to love less. Variance, emulations, which means uh, jealousies. We got to watch that because that could slide in real easy. And sometimes what we could do if we feel an inkling of it, bless them. <laughs> I don't care if you got a dollar, bless them. Amen. Wrath. Do you know the wrath of man does not work the righteousness of God? And, and we have to be careful because of our own definitions. Okay? Because the Bible tells us to be angry and sin not. So there's a door, there's a, there's a way to be angry, but you need to get rid of anger quickly. Amen. Of course, we know there's a righteous indignation. But even in that, you have to watch, be led by the Spirit of God. And don't make excuses for the flesh. Amen. We have to watch being angry. Get rid of it quickly. Because it can surely lead into wrath. And it'll begin to affect other areas in your life. And sometimes it comes out and you don't even realize it. Sometimes it comes out in sarcasm. And different ways that it'll come out with the, you know, the eyes and the <laughs> that, it, that you're, you don't necessarily have to say it, but you will show it. Amen. Strife. Oh my gosh. Y'all stay away from strife. Because when you open the door, I say y'all, but I mean everybody. Because all of us can get into it if we're not walking in the spirit. Strife. When you're in debate and uh, um, always going at it with somebody. Sometimes you got to just back out of the conversation. Okay? Because it will tend to strife. Hey, Amen. I wish I could remember because uh, I was looking up the scriptures uh, the other week. Uh, but anyway, strife opens up the door to every evil work. Amen? So we want to make sure that we stay out of strife. And while Angie is looking that up, uh, seditions or divisions, don't do anything to cause division. Amen. I don't care if it's in the church, in your families, on the job, don't do anything to cause divisions. Okay. And, and that's one of the things uh, in the body of Christ that God said that that's one of the things that God's, God hates. He that so of discord among the brethren it says god hates that amen and i don't want to do anything that god hates and i know y'all don't either amen and it says heresies envians y'all know what those are murders and you know you can murder somebody other than with a knife or a bullet you can murder people's reputations with your tongue so we have to watch what we say about people amen Hallelujah. Uh, drunkenness. Y'all know what that is. And you can be drunk on more than alcohol. Uh, revelings, partyings, all that. And such like. And, and he said, and such like. Anything else that's not like God. Okay? Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You will not receive the blessings of God if you walk in these things. Amen. That's why we have to do a constant check. Amen. You got something there? Oh, okay. All right. You just say amen. But this is the fruit of the spirit. Okay. This is when you know you're walking in the flesh. When you have these. This is when you know when you're walking in the spirit. It says the fruit of the spirit is love. Joy, peace, long-suffering, 
Gentleness. That's what we have to, gentleness. We got to make sure that we're doing gentleness and we don't say, well, that's just me. No, <laughs> this is how, what we're supposed to walk in. Gentleness, I'm going to get you in a second. Gentleness, goodness, faith. Oh, it's fruit of the spirit. Meekness. And sometimes people think meekness is all being weak. That is not being weak. Meekness is strength under control. Hallelujah. You're uh, uh, um, giving in sometimes to somebody else's authority. Depends. That's why I said sometimes. Temperance. Self-control. Yes. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. And Sister Angie uh, got the scripture that I was talking about. Uh huh. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that they do gender strike. Uh huh. Second um, Timothy, Timothy chapter two verse twenty four, and the servant of the Lord must know, must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, in patience. Or was it the other? Uh huh. That's good. That's good. That's one of the ones that I was talking about. Yes. Proverbs 6, let me see if this is, oh no, that's, that's not, I was talking about, um, that's a good scripture, but that's, uh, that's not, and, and the, the one that I was talking about when, um, when we talk about strife, that's what we were talking about, right, strife, um, it, it, it just put me in the mind when Pastor was talking one day about how important are your words, and when he touched on 1 Peter 3, 10 and 11, it just brought other scriptures to my mind. I think, let's check out Psalm 34. That might be. Oh, oh, oh uh, Proverbs 10 and 12. Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all sins. Okay, yep. Hatred stirs up strife. Amen. But love covers all sins. Let me see this one right here. Uh, okay. Let, let, me, uh, uh, let me get this. Psalm 34, 13. Because strife stirs up a lot of times with our mouth. And I was talking about keeping our tongue. Uh, Psalms 34, 13 says, keep thy tongue from evil. Evil is anything that's not like God. Because sometimes, you know, well, I didn't, I didn't uh, curse. I didn't do this. No, anything that's not like God. It said, keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it and so what what i want to do what i want to say is strife is generally caused by our tongue so we have to watch what we say uh with our tongue that's what i wanted to uh get to because i mean what the bible said that the tongue is a little member but oh what fire <laughs> oh what fire that it kindles amen and uh um Anyway, you know what, I could, get, I could really go into that because I'm looking at other scriptures, so we want to go ahead and move on in the lesson. But you all get what I'm saying. We want to make sure that we walk in the Spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen? Hallelujah. If you're after the Spirit, be. If you're after the Spirit, you'll be thinking about God, His Word, and who you are in Christ. Amen? When we keep our minds on that, we don't have a whole lot of space for nothing else. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah for foolishness. Uh, see, it says carnal mindedness uh, produces death, but spiritual mindedness produces life and peace. That's why we want to keep our mind on the word of God. If you keep your mind on the word of God, he says that he, did, he will keep you in perfect peace if your mind is stayed on him. When you see your peace leaving you, your mind done got off Christ. Amen. And we have to, we have to, when that happens, we have to gird up the loins of our mind. In other words, we got to bring it back in. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And it says, uh, carnal mindedness produces death, but spiritual mindedness produces life and peace. Amen. The spiritual well-being that comes from walking with God. 
Oh my goodness. It is as you grow in the Lord, and I know every uh, body that's grown in the Lord has experienced this. As you grow in the Lord, you get more peaceful and you have a you have a lower tolerance for foolishness. You do. Your 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 tolerance is just not and I'm guessing, you know, I, I, I ain't no different, you know, y'all ain't no different. When you're walking in the spirit, your tolerance is lower for foolishness. Yes. Amen. Don't entertain it. <laughs> Don't entertain it. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why some conversations, if somebody say something, sometimes just don't even comment. Right. Amen. Do you know we don't have to say something all the time? No, you really don't. You don't have to get involved in stuff that's not your business. Even if you're sitting around the conversation. And if, if it's bothering you, go. Go. A exit stage left. Which one of cartoon characters? <laughs> yeah, you probably don't know about that one. <laughs> Uh, so it says, uh, uh, number six, lost people cannot please God. That's because uh, they are not born again. They may do good things, but they can't please God. It says in Romans 8, 7, and 8, it says because the carnal mind, because somebody that's an unbeliever it has a carnal mind. And sometimes Christians have carnal minds. Amen. But we don't have carnal minds. We have spiritual minds. Amen. Hallelujah. It says because the carnal mind or the senses, the flesh, opposed to spiritual things, is enmity or hatred or opposite of love uh, against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Even when we as believers are walking in the flesh, we are not pleasing God. And you know what? I know we want to please our Heavenly Father. He's done so much for us. Oh, my gosh. We want to please him. And when you walk in the flesh, we do not please him. Amen. Thank God, though, we can get it back together. Okay, it says they are in the flesh. Amen. Let's, let's uh, go to uh, B. Uh, if you're born again, you aren't after the flesh. We changed that word to after or in the flesh. You are not after the flesh when you're born again. And that's, what, that's how we need to walk. Not after the flesh, but after the spirit. What is God telling us to do? Oh, my gosh. And the more you stay in the word, the more you become sensitive to things that are fleshly. And to somebody else, even other believers, it may not seem fleshly to them. But as you grow in God, you'll find out that there are some things that you have to drop off, whereas somebody else may be able to walk in it. Amen. Hallelujah. Say all things are lawful, but all things are not expedient. Hallelujah. So there are some things I was, um, who was I talking to? Um, I forgot who I was talking to. But anyway, uh, they, were talk, they were talking about something or talking about doing something. I said, oh, I can't do that. And you know what? I, I said, that violates my conscience. And that's where we have to, that's where you have to walk according to the word of God. Amen. I think me and my, um, I, and I've said that more than once. Amen. Uh, uh, my daughters and, and the husband, I, that's where, uh, that's the one that I'm thinking about right now. There are some things I can't do and I can't say. Amen. And we, if the spirit of God is convicting your heart, don't do it. It may be okay for somebody else, but it may not be okay for you. And you don't, if, that, if it's okay for them, leave them alone. And you do what you're supposed to do. Because you're going to be held accountable for what God tells you to do. Amen. You're going to be held accountable for the things that will condemn your heart. Because there may be something that don't condemn somebody else's heart. Amen. 
But if, God, if the Spirit of God says no, you say no. Amen. Hallelujah. And it says that we are in the Spirit. And D, it says, you may be walking after the flesh and getting the same results as you did before being born again. But the truth is, you aren't, and this is kind of sticky, we are dead. Let me put it this way, because we're going to cross, Pastor and I had, had some discussion about this. Um, you aren't spiritually dead anymore. Amen? We walk in the spirit, and we don't walk in the flesh. That's our confession. Do you have opportunities to walk in the flesh? Yes, you do. But we as believers, and I'm saying this by faith, amen, to those that are listening and those that are here, we walk in the spirit and we do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And grace, mm, mm, mm. grace is the power of the gospel so that we can do the things that we are supposed to do. Amen. He said, as I said before, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He gives us, God gives us the word as a remedy for any situation that we get into. There is a word for it. There is a remedy for it. Hallelujah. And all we have to do is take the medicine. Glory to God. Glory to God. We take the medicine. We take the word. And that's our remedy. And sometimes when we take medicine, it may taste a little funny going down. It may feel funny going down. And you may, you know, ew, you know. But I tell you what, when that medicine get in, it does what it's supposed to do. And when we get the word of God on the inside of us, when we allow it, it will do what it's supposed to do. Because there is power inherent in the word of God. Oh, it's power in the word. Glory to God. That's why we want to be full of the word of God. The word that is rightly divided. We're looking at the word so that we can walk up right before the Lord. Not looking for the word to make an excuse for our actions. But we're looking for God and godliness in the word of God. Oh my goodness. So we're walking in the spirit. And we're not fulfilling the lust of the flesh. Amen. And when you find... Or if you find yourself in that position, repent quickly. Oh, my gosh. Even, even sometimes thoughts it, it, uh, uh, that I have thought on too long. You know, because all thoughts don't come from inside. They may come from outside. And what we have to do is not take it. And when we begin to meditate and meditate and meditate on thoughts, then you're taking those thoughts. And boy, sometimes when I find myself out of meditate on, I was like, "Whoa, Jesus, I repent in the name of Jesus uh, for thinking like that. Amen. Because he told us the things that we need to think on. Amen. If you look at, let's look real quick at Philippians 4 and 8. Because that's how he gets us. With a thought. He wants us to think on something other than the word of God. And when we think on it, meditate on it, then it becomes a part of us. That's why he said for us to meditate on his word day and night. He gives us something to meditate on. Let's look at uh, Philippians 4 and 8. And I think next week we're going to put that mic. We're going to try to put that mic out in the middle so that if they got, if they, I want them to read a scripture, then we can use the mic because it, does, it doesn't pick up good uh, when we just say it. So maybe we can do something with that, Pastor, uh, next week. Uh, what did I say? Uh, Philippians 4 and 8. Let me read this. It says, this is what we're supposed to uh, think on. Let, I'm going to go down to 6, okay? Uh, go up, I should say. Be careful or anxious or worried for nothing. 
But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which pass all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. He said, let your requests be made known. Once you do that, then the peace of God, which pass all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And after you've given it to him, sometimes the enemy try to bring it back to your mind. Nope, nope, reject it. This is what he says. After he said that it'll give you half the peace, this is what we need to do. He said, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest or honorable, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, Think on these things. See, when, when those negative thoughts or those thoughts from the enemy try to come up, what you want to do, and if you want to know whether it's from him, uh, 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 look at this scripture and say, let me, let me read you what the Amplified says. This is good. It says, whatsoever things are true. See, this is how we judge it. This is how we judge our thinking. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honorable and worthy of respect, whatever is right and confirmed by God's word, whatsoever things is, is pure and wholesome, lovely and brings peace, admirable and good repute, excellent, worthy of praise, think continually Center your mind on these things. I can't read the bottom part, so I'm going to add that to it. Center your mind on these things. And sometimes the enemy, I don't know about y'all, but sometimes the enemy will have you thinking on things, and the things may be true as far as um, uh, what you see. You understand what I'm saying? But it's not true in what we are believing for. Amen? Amen. And that's what we have to, uh, 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 that's what we have to think on. When you're believing God for, uh, just say healing. When you're believing God for healing, yes, you know you may have pain or you know you may have a condition, but that's not what you think on. Amen? Because the truth is, the truth is, is that by his stripes we are healed. Amen. The truth is that Jesus paid for that already. Amen. He took, he took it upon himself. It said by his stripes, he took the beating for it. So whatever it is, that's our truth. Our truth is the word of God, not what we see. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. And sometimes that's, way, that's where we can uh, uh, get to... Uh, reasonable, for want of a better word, in, you know, because sometimes we try to reason stuff out. Well, this is the way it is. Yeah, I see how it is. But let me go to the word and see what God said about it. Amen. And that's what I'm going to think on, what God said about it. Maybe you got wayward children. Okay, let me see what God said about it. He said the seed of the righteous are blessed. He said they shall be delivered. That's what God said. And so I'm saying what God said. Amen. Hallelujah. We are truth. The believer's truth is the word of God. That's our truth. Hallelujah. Regardless to anything else, our truth is the word of God. Ooh, hallelujah. Thank God for a different truth. Because, <laughs> boy, if we walked after everything that we saw, oh, my gosh, we would be miserable. So it says, uh, um, D, you may be walking after the flesh, and I'm going to finish this up. Praise the Lord. You may be walking after the flesh and getting the same results as you did before being born again, but the truth is you aren't in the flesh anymore. You aren't. You aren't spiritually dead. That's the way to describe that. You aren't spiritually dead anymore, and you do not have to walk in the flesh. Amen? Romans 8 and 9 says, But in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you, 
Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And we know we are his. Amen. That if you're not born again, then you're none of his. Amen. He still died for you. And you have an opportunity to accept him as your Lord and Savior. He still loves you, but you don't belong to God. Amen. Number seven, you have this new spirit on the inside of you. And the only thing holding you back, look at this. Listen, attention. <laughs> you have this new spirit on the inside of you. And the only thing holding you back is your stinking thinking. Amen. Amen. Uh, and, and I want to say, quote, Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy. You present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Well, Pastor Pat, how do I renew my mind? We renew our mind by the word of God. We get God's thoughts. That's how we renew our mind. And many times that's why uh, you see uh, believers still acting according to the flesh, acting according to the way that they did because before they became born again because they have not renewed their minds. We must renew our mind. We got to have a new way of thinking. Amen. And you do that by the word of God. Let's look at a, your spirit is always full of love. Look at that y'all. We have the spirit of God on the inside of us and it's always full of love. It's always full of joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. That's Galatians 5, 22 through 23. It's on the inside of you. That's why we have to know who we are in Christ Jesus. Pastor is so adamant about us knowing who we are and staying in the word of God. Because when you find out who you are in Christ, amen, it changes everything. Glory to God. So it's in us. All we have to do is access it. Glory to God. You got the spirit of God on the inside of you. And in the spirit of God, there's love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. It's in there. <laughs> Hallelujah. We have to draw it out. Amen. We have to get in that word of God and begin to confess the word over our lives. Don't confess what you see all the time. Confess the word. You acknowledge, yeah, I see that, but this is what the word says. And you keep confessing that and it becomes a part of your life because it's who you are. <laughs> it's who we are. Glory to God. It says, uh, uh, will you let hurt, depression, anger, and bitterness rule you? No. We are not letting us rule us, letting that rule us. I don't care what has happened in your life. Amen. We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. We are overcomers. Amen. Whatever has happened in your life, God can give you peace about it. He can allow you, he can give you to where you can forgive somebody for doing the most horrendous thing to you. Glory to God. So we're not going to let that hurt, depression, anger, or bitterness rule us. We're going to be spiritual minded and let Christ reign in us it's our choice it's not somebody else's fault it's not because of somebody else yeah somebody else may have done something but thank god for jesus hallelujah because he makes the difference in our life and you may be out there watching today and even if you're already born again, you can live this higher life. But you may be, by attending to the word of God, but you may be watching and you say, well, I've never accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I want what you're talking about. 
I want that peace. I want that love. I want to be able to forgive what somebody has done to me. I want to be able to walk in that. Amen. And you can do that today when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Father has you watching this today. Because he said no man can come except he draws them. God is drawing you today. The Father is drawing you today. He is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He said that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. Jesus died for you. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. Amen. And he said, whosoever call on the name of the Lord, they shall be saved, according to Romans 10, 13. And all you have to do today is call on the name of the Lord in order to be born again. Don't worry about going, straightening, straightening up something or trying to get something together. Mm -mm. Jesus, take you right in just as you are. <laughs> Hallelujah. He does the changing. Glory to God. So what I want you to do right now, if you want to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want you to repeat this prayer after me today. Amen. Come on and pray with me. Say, dear God, I come to you now as a sinner. And I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ died for my sins. And on the third day, I believe that you raised him from the dead. I accept what Jesus Christ did for me. And I accept him now as my Lord and my Savior. Because I believe this in my heart. And I've confessed with my mouth. I am now saved. I am born again. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Heavenly Father that I am born again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And if you prayed this prayer along with us today, we have a booklet that we want to get to you. And this booklet is called The New Birth. You have been born again. And you may say, well, Pastor Pat, I don't know what all happened to me, but that's okay. You don't have to know it all now. You'll have a little more explanation in this booklet, The New Birth. So what we want you to do is call us so that we can get this booklet to you and also help you understand what it is that you have done on today in accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So go ahead and pick up that phone and call us at 810-407-8500. That's 810-407-8500. And if we don't answer right away, then leave your name and your number and we will be sure to get back with you because we want to get this information to you. And also after becoming born again, you need to get into a good Bible believing church that's full of the love of God. And let me tell you something, Abiding Faith Christian Center is a great place to be.